Math Climber isn't here to hold your hand. It's here to hurt you. The climb is brutal, the questions are stressful, and the fall is always waiting. Basically, it's exactly what I wanted it to be. About six months ago, I started developing my game Math Climber as a solo dev. Now that it's launched, I wanted to talk a little bit about the inspirations behind it and why some of the design choices are the way they are. As a kid, I have great memories of computer lab days when the entire class would shuffle down the hall for some truly unstructured free time on the lab computers. I spent a lot of my time playing Treasure Math Storm. Answering a few math questions was all that stood between young me and that sweet, sweet exploration gameplay. Yes, kind Mr. Elfman, I will gladly count your crystals if it brings me one step closer to adding another treasure to my collection. The thick black outlines, simple color palettes, and dithered shading really came together to make a visual treat for the era. And I wanted to take that style and combine it with a very particular type of game, the fabled Fadian game. Fadian game? Is that the official term? Honestly, I've shipped one of these things now, and I'm still not totally sure. Precision platformer? I mean, that's close, but Celeste is also a precision platformer. I mean, rage game? Sort of, but that applies more broadly to just intentionally frustrating games, like I want to be the guy. If the game involves a vertical climb, tricky movement, and compounding setbacks from slip-ups, then I'd probably just call it a Fadian game. I like that wording, so I'm gonna go with that. Here's a quick tip on design. If you're struggling to conceptualize your game, I recommend imagining just your pinnacle gameplay experience. One or two moments that just encapsulate your entire vision in just like five or six seconds. Is it grabbing that final Isaac item that breaks your build wide open? Is it pulling an Omega God Rare card from a pack? Or is it beating a Souls game final boss with no healing left and just barely making it through? Figure out these few defining moments and build your game around them to maximize their impact. For Math Climber, my defining moment was simple. A player is almost at the summit. They've struggled for hours, just one jump away from victory. They confidently charge forward, but suddenly get stopped by a basic math question. Any other day, they'd answer it without thinking, but now, under pressure, their mind blanks. They always laughed at the contestants on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, yet here they are now, under the spotlight themselves, and bam! They fall all the way back to the beginning because they couldn't answer a simple math question. That was my singular gameplay vision moment. And when I started Math Climber, I had a crystal clear vision of the core gameplay moment. The combination of Fadian game and math game. And why make a Fadian game specifically? Well, I had a little bit of experience in the past with it. Now, like, Five or so years ago at this point, I made a getting over it style level for Mario Maker. Here's a clip of Trihex enjoying that level. I really enjoyed doing the sort of game design that went into making these types of maps. You need to be actively aware of where you place large gaps and critical jumps. Here's Math Climbers, for example. You might notice some of these larger gaps that run vertically through the map. I call these progress killers. Fall down one of these and you're in for a pretty bad time. And then you combine that with the elbows of the map over here, where the map naturally winds back and forth. This is also a very bad place to climb. And as you start designing and stacking these things on top of each other, it just weaves into a very fun puzzle in terms of design of how you want to make your map, where you want to put these gaps, where you want to make things a little bit easier. And then if you put a hard thing on top of an easy thing, and then an easy thing, and then two hard things makes for a really tough time. Just and that brings me to sort of overall difficulty. So let's talk about difficulty. Fadian games are notoriously challenging, but the best ones strategically modulate difficulty over time. Most people imagine a straightforward difficulty line, something steadily increasing like this, right? But I would say it's actually far more engaging if you build it like this. You want a general upward trend, but with occasional sharp spikes. This shifts the experience from a restless uphill slog to one where the players feel triumphant in these moments when they finally overcome the spikes, repeatedly breaking through these little hurdles. And on top of that, if you give the hurdles unique theming, well, they get stuck in the player's mind. Oh, I really remember that grape section. 
from Pogostuck, for example, and you can specifically reference the part of the map with the theming it had. And on top of all this wanting to build a Fadian game, more recently I launched my first game ever, Card Air, which also involved a fair bit of, like, playful bullying of the player. Some of my favorite moments in Card Air were little gotcha moments where the game cheekily calls out the player for doing something it kind of could predict they were going to do. Wait. Did he say card air? I thought Math Climber was your first game. Okay, okay, let's clarify here. Card Air was a long-term passion project, a trading card RPG inspired by old-school Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy games. It came out late last year, and then I started working on Math Climber. I'm proud of Card Air, but coding isn't really my strong suit, so I used RPG Maker to make it. Oh no, I've mentioned a game engine, so now I have to go on a tangent about what game engine you should use. We're gonna have to go two tangents deep on this one, hold on. So, as far as game engines go, there's really a lot of options, and it's just going to come down to what's best for you, depending on your own skill set and kind of what you want to accomplish. Starting off with RPG Maker, because we were already sort of talking about it, I think it gets unfair criticism. It's way more powerful than most people realize. I've seen full MMOs, gorgeous 3D games, and some of my all-time favorite indie games were made with it. Things like Lisa. God, I love that game. But it does take some creativity to get non-standard RPG gameplay working in it, like, say, if you wanted to build a card battle system, like this guy. Even standing on the shoulders of giants and leveraging great plugins, it still felt like fitting square pegs into round holes for me. But if you're looking for a solution that requires less coding and is great at making 2D RPGs, RPG Maker might be the choice for you. Specifically, I'd recommend RPG Maker MZ if you're jumping in. With Math Climber though, my main goal was to learn a new game engine, something I could build more expansive projects in. And that's why I chose Godot. And man, I am never going back. Godot has surpassed my expectations at every turn. It's fast, it's lightweight, it's efficient, it has good documentation, and it's growing every day. I remember having a specific gripe about rich text label alignments, and then BAM! They fixed that exact issue I was having in the next release. It was amazing to see something just come together that fast. Now a lot of people might recommend Unity as a great engine to jump into, and Unity is fine. It has some good stock assets if that's the way you're trying to go, but my experience with it was it was just clunky. Slow loading, GUIs that just took a couple extra seconds to load every single time in the editor. And that might not seem like a big deal, like a couple extra seconds to open something in the editor, what's the big deal? But you do that just thousands of times in the game dev process and man it adds up and gets annoying. In general, I'd recommend Godot. I just really think it's a great engine to jump into right now. So with a clear vision of sort of the experience and flavor I wanted to offer, mechanics were what followed next. I'm a long time Magic the Gathering player, I'll save the too many thoughts I have on that for another video, because man, Magic has gone all sorts of ways since I started playing it way back in the day. But from Magic design, I know the idea of top-down versus bottom-up design, and it's a really cool concept as far as design goes even though I admittedly always forget which is which in terms of top, down, and bottom up, but uh, let me check the notes. Okay, yeah. Bottom up design starts with the mechanics and fits flavor around them. Say I knew I had a mechanic of a 2D platformer and I wanted to make a game about something getting from point A to point B. Well, I might make the flavor for this a little guy who likes to jump. We'll call him Jump Guy. Top-down design, on the other hand, begins with the theme and flavor, and then builds out the mechanics from there. And this is where I was working for Math Climber. Say, for example, you want to make a game where you play as a ghost. Okay, my flavor is you're going to be making a playable ghost. How would I make mechanics that sort of support and enforce this? Well, ghosts can't really interact with things. Maybe you could only interact with, like, objects in the world, and that's how you sort of... Oh my god, I've made ghost trick on accident. I just made ghost trick. All that was really left was the sort of major movement mechanic for my game. This is something absolutely critical for the genre, as the movement will sort of define the game as a whole. And I spent a lot of time sort of brainstorming this out and really couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. For a while, I really thought I was going to do a sort of grappling hook mechanic like you see in Umahara Kawase. It's a sort of famously punishing game with janky slip-up prone movement and actually inspired getting over it itself. But just before starting prototyping, I stumbled upon this short video. And that was it. 
That little Sephiroth clip really just inspired the entire movement of the game. Hooking the wall, winding up, and then flinging yourself from the wall. I thought that was a great way to do it and gave me that drive where I could hook the wall, ask a question, and then drop you if you get the question wrong. I guess it's probably worth taking a minute to talk about the pause menu in this thing. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the design and the inspirations behind it. Hold on, I'm going to need the good music for this one. Why does my game's pause menu look like this? Well, let's talk about it. First, I've always loved how Binding of Isaac's menu felt like part of the story, like Isaac was taking little notes through his run. Quick fun fact, I made a little mod for Isaac a few years back that ended up getting added to the official version of the game. But back to the point. The striking yet smooth art style of real hands with a washed out limited color palette? Well, that's straight from Hylix. Mogdog, yeah the Nubby's Number Factory Mogdog, made a tutorial that actually led me to using a sprite for the effect. Finally, let's talk about contrast. Switching up art styles can really grab attention. Think about the hand in Spongebob or the foot in Monty Python. It hits harder because it's so different from everything else around it. From there, it was just jumping into the work of doing the development and learning. Over the past six months, I just dove deep into Godot. I started out with Bracky's video tutorial and I cannot recommend it enough. Funny enough, my finished game even includes traces of this beginner tutorial that I carried over from my project. I, I wear it as a badge of honor from my first game in Godot, and I, I, I just can't recommend this tutorial enough. Start by sort of building the tutorial yourself, and then ask yourself, how can I do this mechanic? Well, how would I put that in here? And research and let it take you naturally to, to learning more about the game engine and how it handles different things. Every rabbit hole you can come across will be more naturally found when you're trying to implement a mechanic yourself. If you are thinking about creating your own game, just jump in and start. It won't always be easy, but nothing beats the satisfaction of turning your ideas into real playable experiences. So just trust your instincts, have fun, and keep making stuff. This has been my sort of long form rambling video about my inspirations and a little of the behind the scenes design work that went into making Math Climber. If you like this thing, let me know. If you want me to talk a little bit more about the development maybe and the technical coding stuff from a non-coding uh, inclined person, then let me know too. I'm interested to see what sort of long form videos people might enjoy. Your game's waiting for you to make it and there's never been a better time to begin. Get out there. Oh, and right, obviously, I should probably mention Math Climbers out right now on Steam. I'll leave a link in the description. Give it a shot if it sounds like your kind of thing.